Hi, it's soldering time with Sagan. Yeah, we're gonna do some soldering. What are we gonna assemble, Sagan? A computer. A computer, what's it called? The AC2014 Mini. RC. RC, yeah, I don't sorry. Know. RC stands for, I don't know. Anyway, yep, it's a Z80 computer. Look at that. It's a Z80 computer, old school. The Z80 processor, Sagan. That's the brains of the computer, and that comes from 1976. What? <laughs> yeah, that's how old it is, okay? So it's a really old processor on it, and we're gonna make it. And to talk to this computer, it doesn't hook up to a display. We have to talk to it through <laughs> another computer, through weird. a serial cord. That's weird, huh? Yeah, weird. Yeah, all right. So you're gonna solder this, yeah. and where's our chips? We've got our chips. Yeah. chips. Yep, so we've got our chips. Where's our capacitors? Here. Yep, and our resistors and other stuff. Here. Yep, and our sockets. Sockets. Yep, I see sockets. And, and connectors. And connectors. Cool. Ho hopefully Daddy will not make a mistake this time. What? I don't make mistakes soldering. Yeah, last time. Remember <laughs> on the last video when we were soldering the lead? You made a mistake in the soldering? Dude. <laughs> oh, you're never going to let me forget, are you? I missed no. one. All right, let's go. All right. So, first thing, Sagan, the most fun thing, the sponge. sponge. We have to wet the sponge. Oh, yeah. yeah, thicker solder is going to be easier. I'll try and find it. Yeah, I've picked up the There again. you go. You always have to, no matter how good you are at soldering, it always takes a few joints to get back up to speed. You've got to make sure the flat part of your iron is flat on that pad so it conducts all the heat into the pad and the pin that you're trying to solder. And then once the pad and the pin are up to temperature, then you feed in your solder and it'll just flow like butter around the pin and the pad. Yeah, I'll try and find the thicker solder. After the big flight, uh, it could be anywhere, Daddy. <laughs> it could be anywhere. Might, might want to give you a tip of white. On, the, on your sponge. Remember to keep the wedge part of your soldering iron flat so it contacts both the pad and the pin. Go. Yeah, just leave your iron on the joint for a second and then start feeding the solder in. And if you feed a consistent amount onto each joint, um, and that's what you want. Um, Until it's sort of like a nice shiny fillet. Um, Perfect, yeah, that one, that last one was good. Um, that's one. Pesky board rocking around. First row done. All right, good work. Next. That. That. Yep. That. And that. Yeah. Yeah. The thicker solder would be easier, but we can't find it in the lab, can we, Sagan? Yep. Not after the big storm. Not. They can watch. So this is 0.38 millimeter solder. It's about as small as you can get. Yeah. So it's not really designed for this through hole stuff. Yeah, and I use um 0.3 on um, lead for uh, for my paces. So this is the exact same size as my lead that I use. Oh, you use 0.3 millimeter yeah. in your pacer? Yeah. I didn't know they made them that small. Yeah, they made them that small. Really? Yeah. Jeez, when I was a boy, it was 0.5 millimeters. Yeah, I use 0.5 and 0.3. Wow. I sometimes use 0.5. Did you know that this solder, Sagan, inside it, even though it's very thin, it has five different cores of flux inside. I know, I can see that. Yeah, five, five core. core flux. And it says on the top, multi-core solder. That's right, multi-core solder. It's genuine multi-core brand. So it's got five cores of flux, and flux helps you, helps clean the joint before you, uh, when it goes on, it helps clean it just in case it's tarnished or got any other, um, any other thing on it because if your solder joint is tarnished then the solder doesn't take very well, so. Are you just going back and doing a few, are you? Yeah. 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 Yeah, are 
deck here with nice solder and is just trying to learn how to put a consistent amount of solder on each joint. And that comes with practice too. Practice with only one go. Now I learned how to do that. Yeah, I know, go. exactly. Yeah, because we didn't practice before this. Yeah. And this is only the second time you sold it, isn't it, Sage? Yeah, in my whole life, and I am, I'm really good. <laughs> You're really good. <laughs> Third row. You are pretty good, Sagan. Uh, the comments on the previous video of you soldering, everyone said that you were much better than some of the other YouTubers out there in soldering. Yeah, I'm much better than Daddy when he made that mistake. Oh, thanks, dude. <laughs> You're never going to forget that. No. Pisky little joint. Yeah. Come on. There we go. That's getting a good. Ah, oh, beautiful flow on there. Awesome work, Sagan. Last row. Yep, last row. I give it one more. Time. Yeah, give it a give it a wipe after each row. Oh, yeah, wow. I think you would do a lot better with the thicker solder. I'm sure you would. This thin stuff is. Um, it gives you more control because it can control the amount of solder that you're feeding in but you do have to feed in a lot more and generally it's um, harder to make uh, get in there and make good thermal in initial thermal contact with the pad so the thicker solder just yeah it's going to be nicer in that respect the flux is more exposed too so but we won't blame our solder we always say again nope no. Nope. Otherwise, Mr. Soda will get mad. <laughs> and how old are you, Sagan? Seven and three Seven. quarters. Seven and three quarters. Yep. How how old are some of those other those other solders out out there? Oh, the said. other YouTubers. They're yeah. in their twenties and thirties. <laughs> some of them. Finished. And everyone reckons you're better, Sagan. Give us a thumbs up. Yeah. Doing that super quick. I think that eventually is new. Because so, the soldering is a different experience every time you use a different soldering iron, which you, you haven't used this one before, no. and a different tip. I don't think you've used this particular tip before. No. And the type of solder that you're using. Never uh, use this one? Yeah, this is lead free, so this is not as easy to solder with as lead. You'll find that with leaded solder it would be much easier. But I think this is easier. Oh, you think? Okay. But my mum will not let me no. use lead solder. No. Yet. She won't. Not yet until I'm... <laughs> not yet until it's hedger. Well, until if I'm you learn to use lead free, if you can do good soldering with lead free solder, then there's no reason to use lead. Really. Yeah, that's the problem with this little stuff. It just kinks really easily and you're always got to straighten it up. That's better. So yeah, every time you solder is actually different unless you're using the same thing all the time, which we're we're not doing enough here to use the same setup every time. Daddy's always got a different setup every time you come to the lab, don't I? Yep, always. It's always changing, the lab's always changing. Yep. And when the flood happened, it was a complete maze. <laughs> it was a maze. It was a maze. <laughs> you're right, it was. How do you like that paste soldering iron? We're using a paste one. Does it feel good? Yeah, it feels much better than the other one. Really? It feels better than the Heiko that we used? I think we used the Heiko last time. Yeah, yeah, we used a Heiko. Yeah? This one feels better. Alright. Sagan likes the paste. <clears throat> because you see how that the tip is really close to where your fingers are? And that, that helps you keep better control. The, sh the closer the tip is to your fingers, then find a control that you're going to have. Yeah, but if the tip's too close, you can burn. It you can burn. Burn your fingers. <laughs> you don't want that. Nope. Yeah, you got one on the end there you missed. Yeah. But it's more than this one. Oh, it's alright. Yeah. What? Why? I loved it when, when the um, thing expands. 
<laughs> the expanding sponge is pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like some somebody somebody's just about to blow up. <laughs> when they drink water, they blow up. <laughs> You're holding that solder a long way back. That must, how do you control the solder at that sort of distance? That's very impressive, Sagan. And at tight angles too. It keeps turning like me. It's all control. I would fit the resistors next because they're low profile. Because what, what you don't want to do is put in like a really high part and then your board will wobble. You can't sit it flat anymore. So anyway, let's have a look, Sagan. This looks pretty good. Nice work, dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When we finish this, I'm going to do my happy dance. Happy dance. I got a happy dance. Solder in happy dance. Okay. You want to do your happy dance now? Yeah. <laughs> happy <laughs> dance. All right. I want you to put these two 22 picofarad capacitors in those two holes there. I'm a pretty good coder. You're an excellent coder, mate. I can I can code a game by myself. You like can. I did like I did yesterday. I okay. could do a whole now, game. Put, now what you do is you put your thumb on top of those so they don't fall out, flip it over, and just bend the leads out slightly. Yeah. Now you've got to get inside those through those pesky through hole pins. Easy. Easy you think. Lemon squeezy. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Like I said. Okay. Use the side cutters to cut them off. How how you do side cutters, okay? You get in there and then you just tilt it to the side and then snip it. But keep your finger over there like that, otherwise it could fly off. Tilt a little bit and snip. Oh, yeah, see it flew off. You gotta keep your finger on it. <laughs> ah, you lost it. I think that's our first pin in the brand new carpet. Well, these instructions are pretty good. Look at these, Sagan. Cool. It's because it didn't have the resistor values on here. It just said R7, R8, etc. So we would have had to consult the tiny little schematic, which was there, to find out which value is what. But they already have it down there. And they have a picture of the resistors too. 22K, 10K, 1 meg, 2K2. So I yeah. want you to find all those different values Here, here's our resistors here i'll sort them and looks like these ones are all one value they're all one value that's right because they're all on the tape so one k's they'd be one k so one two three four yeah we've got four of them so what you want to do is just hold 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 these here like this and just pull off that tape so what you want to do i'll show you the trick to this okay and you want to hold it like that yeah and then Sort of like just bend like that, yeah. and that should be. It leaves a little, just a, a fillet over there, like a, a radius over there, and that you'll find that that should fit perfectly. almost perfectly. Oh, look at that! Into there. Okay. Okay. So hold it like this. Yep. Bend. Bend down, and you should find that that's almost the perfect radius. Oh, make sure they're all in the same direction to, um, too. Not that they're not that it matters. It's just a nice thing to have them all in the same direction. What you want to do is just bend the leads out, just a little bit like that. Yep, splay them out like that. Yep, and you'll find that bend that you did is a almost precise 0.4 inches pin spacing. Yeah. Cool. Might want to bend those out a bit. Yeah, it was hard to get your chisel tip on the pad on that side there. Yeah, you've got to come in at a different angle. Maybe maybe you want to flip your board around like that. So, yep. Yeah. There you go. That, that was good. Oh, I like this one. Yeah, uh, for, for, for these ones on this side, yes. That angle is going to be the best. But for the other ones, you always have to sort of like move your board around when you're doing pins like this. Yeah. Look, look, pins cross over. <laughs> There's two wires crossed. That's all right. See now, now you might want to flip it around like that. See? That's right. Just pi zero. 
What's pi zero? Look, pi zero. Oh, you're right. Pi <laughs> didn't. Yeah, that's for the Raspberry Pi. Yep, we've got one. We've got a Raspberry Pi. Yeah, we want red, red, orange. Right, but there's four colours. There it is. Um. Red. Yes, there is. The one at the end is the tolerance of the resistor. What colour is it? Gold? Yeah. Yeah. Red, red, orange. Here it yep. is. Seventeen oscilloscopes. <laughs> you have seventeen oscilloscopes. That's crazy. Seventeen. <laughs> seventeen? Who has seventeen oscilloscopes? You. <laughs> That's crazy. Why why do I need 17 oscilloscopes? I don't know. It's crazy. No. Plus one because there's one at home. Yep, that's at true. Home. Yep. So in fact we got 18 oscilloscopes. That's nuts. Yeah. And Huxley really likes that they are that oscilloscope at home. He does, doesn't he? Yeah, he just presses all the buttons like that. That's really sharp. Yeah, there's a really sharp fine point tip. Why? Uh, because if you want to do really fine surface mount soldering, then you would use the fine tip. That's easy as what, Sagan? Easy as pie. Easy as pie. P-I-E also stands for some also stands for something else that I learned at school in year two. Really? So it's yeah. an acronym for something? Yeah. So P is persuade. Right. And P I is entertain and E. Wait no. E's entertain and I's inform. They're three purposes of the author trying to tell you in a book. Oh, okay. There's persuade, inform, or entertain. Got it. So they can entertain you in a book, they can persuade you in a book, or they can inform you in a book. Wow. That's really deep philosophy, Sagan. Thanks for that. How does it look? How does it look? Look at those, Sagan. They are fantastic joints. Yeah. I'm liking the look of those. Beautiful. Well done, mate. What do we have to do now, Sega? Get the offcuts of our resistors and do them as links. Links? Seriously? This mate, is crazy. I don't know why we have to use... why we have to put links in it. It's not for PCB layout reasons. Yeah, maybe it's for experimenting and jumping later. Maybe it's like set in memory addresses and stuff like that. It's really tricky to get those, isn't it, Sagan? They're tucked away in there, you've got to feed your solder through. Yeah. Really tricky. All right, Done. there's two, yeah, four more down there. Now, I'll tell you the trick to these, Sagan, because they're all flapping around in the breeze there, what you do is you put the jumper links on them to hold them all together yeah. as a big group. You see how they're all a big solid group now? Yeah. So it's much easier to actually keep them all in place like that. I'd do ones in the opposite corner first. And once you've done those two, okay, well, you shouldn't have to hold the board anymore. Is this a fail? Is this a fail? I think it's a fail, say again. Okay, then. Fail! <laughs> Thanks, dude. Um, I soldered a pin, well, you soldered, but I put it on there, a pin header. We're supposed to have a socket instead of a pin header. Oh, actually that wasn't the FTDI interface, that was the uh, keyboard interface. So not that we're going to use the keyboard interface on this anyway. So we're now soldering the right angle uh, FTDI pin header, which is a pin header, it's not a socket, is it, Sagan? Yep. Right. And I just finished. Now we've got a monster 40-way header, Sagan. <laughs> Good work there, Sagan. Yeah, you got more consistent near the end. Feeding a little bit overzealous. There's a little bit too much solder on a couple of those, but it's fine, dude. Well done. Okay, we've got. A, a power socket and a switch so four of those and three joints there they're big holes so you're gonna have to feed in a lot of solder with 0.35 millimeter solder wow yep there you go that's yeah that's probably good enough lucky last the bypass capacitor so you know, we probably should have put those in first or second but it doesn't matter 
So do you call it a LED or an LED, Sagan? LED. LED, yep. There's always one that you miss every time, guaranteed. Okay, Sagan, I think what they actually provided us with was right angle 40 way, a straight, we, we put in a straight 40 way, and we've got a socket 40 way as well. I think, it doesn't matter for this, it'll still work, but this is actually going, it, it, there's like a daughter board and you can plug in multiple boards and stuff. And if you're gonna do that, I think the right angle was the one to use. So we, we didn't actually have to solder in that 40 way, but that was fun, wasn't it? Yeah. Cool, let's plug the chippies in. So, Chippy well, and because the pins, you can see that they're sort of splayed outwards. Yeah. They're not straight. We have to actually bend those and daddy will do that because it requires a lot of force and a deft touch to get them now do they look straight now yes yeah all right daddy's got a good eyeball for that now we have to get pin one is over here see that notch yep. has to match that notch and these are dual wipe sockets because they have, see, a contact on either side. So they're called dual wipe because they wipe on both sides of the pin. We've got a 68B5O. What is this one? Can you read the number? 183. 1083. Well, it's actually, it's that number there. Yeah, there's lots of stuff on here. It's actually uh, 62256. So can you find the 62256 on there? Found it. Six, yep. two, two, five, six. six there. So wait, wait, you've got to get pin one right. Notch up there, notch there. Okay, what you do is you get sort of on an angle, get ones, all the pins in one side first, all in one side first, and then that, yep, push it down. <coughs> Excellent. This will be our ROM. What's a ROM? A read-only memory. It contains all of the instructions for our computer. Then these are our TTL chips. TTL, hey, a small thing. Are you going to ask me what TTL means? What is it? <laughs> transistor, transistor logic. It's much quieter without that fan, isn't it? Yeah. I think they're all in the right way. And we're ready to power up, I think. Uh, we want FTDI power. Oh, we've got to put the jumpers in. So we want the power to come from here, and it says set the keyboard jumper to Pi or serial, depending on what input you want. Serial, connect jumpers to the ground position for basic. We want basic to ground to the ground zero position, ground. Okay, so that will set the memory address. You want to put that on there? These little jumper links, that will set the memory address for the ROM so that when this when the processor boots up, it will know, it will read from a certain memory address in there and there'll be instructions and it'll run our basic programming. So we can do some basic programming. What what language do you use at the moment? Um, I use the block language, the um, scratch. Scratch, Block. Yeah. Oh, blocks and yeah, a graphical user. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we're gonna use a command line programming language called basic and it's pretty basic. So, <laughs> It says it in the name. That's it. All right, Sagan. So nice. Our LED's on. Look at that. Yeah. Beauty. And so we're powering it five volts um, from our uh, F, well, our FTDI, the, our <laughs> serial board. And it's supposed to be 115,200 serial speed. So let's get our terminal program. COM8, 115,200. Select OK. And if Daddy hasn't swapped the transmit and receive lines, which I do all the time, <laughs> then I'll push it. Let me push the reset button. Nothing. Maybe I've swapped it. I might have gifted. Hang on, I'll just repower it. Nothing, Sagan. Oh, we're going to have to do some troubleshooting, dude. Okay, Sagan, I can see here that it actually uses on the FT. It's got an RTS pin, a request to send. I hope it doesn't need that. So I'm just assuming that we can work without that. Nothing. Wait, Daddy. What? See, the scroller is all the way down to the bottom. Maybe all the writing's up at the top. Uh, you're right, but no, it no. the cursor's there. It should show up right where that cursor is. It's all right. Good thinking, though, Sagan. Good troubleshooting thinking. 
Okay, Sagan, it's time for the big guns. Let's bring out the oscilloscope because we're not getting any lights at all transmit and receive. So we're not like seeing any data being transmitted or from receive. this. Or received. Or received. So let's so there's our five volt rail. Okay. Yep. Alright. So let's maybe measure our clock. C L K is I assume that yep, look the clock is on. These header pins are very nice. Yeah. Oh, hey, there we go, mate. We have a clock. There we go. It's got all these little over they're called overshoots, and it's got those because look at our big antenna earth lead there. Okay, so that's naughty, but the signal's there. So we have a clock. So that means our processor is getting its clock. So what else is wrong? Let's measure the uh, serial line. Okay, so let's trigger that. Okay, let's do single shot trigger and we'll reset that. And bingo, there's our serial data. Okay, captured. So our serial data, want to push that button? Which one? Yep, the reset button. There you go, look, there's all that text which would come up on the screen. It should come up. So our computer is actually working. It's outputting all of this data. So it works, dude, there was nothing wrong with your soldering. Transmit and receive, I may have goofed the transmit and receive. No, still can't see anything. But it still works because we can see our, all that data on there. Not sure why this is not working. But it should still work, right? Well, this, com this the computer's working because it's outputting the serial data. And if we actually decoded that, then it would. We, we can decode that. You want to decode it on the oscilloscope? Yeah? Yeah, how do we decode it on okay. the oscilloscope? Okay, let me show you. Where's the serial? This is nuts. Where's the serial decoding? Oh, there we go. Features. I d right. Okay, you got to go into... What? Features. <laughs> and Okay. Did frequency response analyzer. Okay, reference waveform. Serial bus. There we go. Doesn't have a serial... Oh, that's why. Because I don't have a serial decoder installed. Oh, I don't have the option. Say again? That's terrible. They haven't given me the option for a serial decoder. Installed licenses. Segment of memory, mask, bandwidth, waveform, gen. No, I don't have the serial license. Fail. Unbelievable. Thanks, Keysight. Well, let's ditch this scope. Let's get another oscilloscope. Maybe another one up there has a serial decoder. Yeah. Get our nice Roden Schwartz. Look at this. It's big. This one's a Bobby Dazzler, Sagan. So we switch on our protocol. This one's actually touchscreen. We want UART, which is serial. Okay, and we want to configure it. Parity none, da, 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 and what speed were we? 115,200, yeah? No parity, one stop bit. Okay, we should be able to decode that now. 10 to 1, I don't know why it was set to 100 to 1. Just make sure we, yep. Oh, there we go. There and we go. Data. There we go. There's our data. So. It's on stop mode. Yeah, you're right. It's on stop mode, Sagan. Boom, Boom! There's our data. Okay. And it stopped. Okay. What I'm going to do is just move it all the way over here. It's in stop mode. Yep, it is. Now that's We've a lot. stopped it. That's a lot of data. Let's run that again and capture. Pew. And there, and it stopped. Okay. I captured it. Pretty much. Well. Zero 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 zero. That doesn't look correct. It so it's not decoding it properly. So we need to go into our protocol decoder. Sagan, I was looking at the wrong bus. It's the one, not the way we've got two buses turned on. I was looking, I was looking at the wrong bus. Dolt B2. We want like, can we like turn decode off? There we go. B1. Okay, so there's our bus down there. It can see, uh, can we make that bigger? It'd be nice to make that bigger. I can see it. You can read it? Okay. Yep. All right. Oh, there we go. We can make it bigger. So let's go right back to the start here yeah, and see what it says. Oh, it's actually got incorrect. Yeah, it's got incorrect data there. Ah, oh, hi. There we go. You were right before Sagan. I think we had it. Ha ha! Look, we got it. You were right, dude. It was that high low thing. <laughs> I switched it to low. Z. What does that say? Z eighty. 
Z80. SBC. Single board computer. Z80 single board computer. And if we, okay, you want to press the um, si single shot button again? Single. And the reset. Ta-da. And you want to use this horizontal to zoom into here. Ah, uh, there we go. And use this one to scroll across. There you go. And can you read it? What was by G R? So SBC. Yeah, that was the Z80 single board computer. Single yep. board computer by G R A N T by Grant. Surly, and that's what's supposed Sir, to be there, say again. Surly, C-R-L-S. L-F is line fees. C and C-R is carriage return. D yep, cold, cold or warm start. There you go. We got it, say again. Our computer works. And it should show up on there. Yeah, well, it should. Let's go Dude, and test. So all that, yeah, there's just something wrong with our serial um, decoder here. Yeah. On the reading or the or the connection of that, but our computer works, so your soldering was spot on, mate. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right, Sagan, we, we got, got it to work. work. High five. Cool. Um, yeah, we used a different uh, serial adapter, different FTDI, so I have no idea why the other one didn't work. Here we go. What's the instructions? It says cold or warm. Press cold or warm boot. If this shows up, press C for cold boot. If this shows up, yes. Press C. C. Memory top. Push return to allow all RAM to be used. Ta-da! Z80 Basic version 4.7B. Copyright 1978 by Microsoft. 1978, dudes. 1978. This is running Microsoft Basic with 32K of RAM. Now, we can have a basic program so I'm gonna, this is how you do a basic program, okay? Yeah. You have gotta put line numbers first. You can either have the one, two, three, you can put any line number, okay? But we're gonna put 10, and we're gonna do, uh, can we do CLS? Let's do it, which means clear screen. 20, print, what, what, what would you like to say on the screen? Print, hello we're, there. Hello there, not hello world. Sagan wants hello there. Okay. 30. Go to 20. You ready? Let's run our program. So it'll print hello there, hello there, hello there. It should. Hello there. Hey. That's our program. Hello cool. There, hello there, hello there. Break in 20. So we just press Control C to break that and we can list our program. Okay. Can we do did the CLS? No, see a clear screen doesn't work. Okay, so what we can do is we can go uh, 20, uh, 15, n equals 1. Okay, and I'm going to count. So let's list our program again. And 20, print, n. And 25, n equals n plus 1. So it should count now. So if we list our program... Okay, what it's going to do is it's going to go, it's going to make n equal to 1. n's just a variable, okay? So n is 1. We're going to print the value of n, which will be 1, and then we'll go n equals n plus 1. So n will become what? 2. 2, of course. And then it'll just, jump, just go, like go to scratch. 20. Yeah. Just like scratch, a number held in a variable. A number held in a variable. You know all about variables. Yep. Cool. I use them all the time. Use scratch. all the time. Oh, awesome work, dude. Here we go. Jewel, look, it's counting up. Ha <laughs> ha. Cool. Count. We did it. So that's a basic program, Sagan. <laughs> yeah, it's, it uses line numbers like this and then instructions. So it's different to how you uh, use your graphical join blocks together in Scratch. Yeah. yeah. Much different. Cool. Well done, mate. So, Sagan, we built our RC2014 Z80 computer kit from 1970. Well, this is from 76. So, 78. Yeah? And we ran a basic program. Awesome! Cool. Even though it took, like, about 10 troubleshoots or something. It, it did. We had to troubleshoot it. We had to get a little serial adapter to get it working. I don't know why my other one. That was my old faithful serial adapter. I don't know why it didn't work. <laughs> I mean, anyway, we troubleshoot it on the oscilloscope. Yep, and it said... 
And it said the protocol, it said the, um, we did protocol decoding and it said Z80 single ball computer, didn't it? Yeah. And it worked. So how would you rate that kit out of 10? Is that fun kit? Yep. I'd rate it, um, let me think. 10. 10 out of 10 for the RC24. Well, you built your own computer, dude. That's pretty good. Wasn't a single soldering error on there. Nope. Yep, well done. So oh, that's yeah. only your second kit, yeah? That's yeah. your second soldering kit. Second. Awesome, well done. All right, what do we say at the end of the video, Sagan? Catch you next time. <laughs> Catch you next time. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think we have the Matrix, Sagan. <laughs> I think we're in the Matrix. We, what, what did we just do? We, we pressed W instead of C and, and we wrote list and look. And yeah, so we warm booted it and then we did list. And because this doesn't, this is volatile memory, so it loses it. So, and it just listed all rubbish. So there you go. But we do actually have our prompt. But, uh, and <laughs> let's see what happens. If, oh, if we run. No, oh no, it can't even decode our stuff properly. We're going to have to reboot that.